today I'm going to be working on adapting something. Uh, I have an old play that um, we're going to be adapting into a, a, a screenplay. So it's probably going to be like a, a short screenplay. I'm not really going to adapt it to a, a whole feature length thing, which is more for like the festival circuit. Um, so we're going to, we're not going to go over the play because it's really old. Um, and uh, I think that I, I have retained most of what is important about it and I actually think it's kind of fortuitous that I have it, don't have it fresh in my mind because uh, if, if you just read it, if you've just read a play a lot of the times, uh, you, you'll be sort of stuck in the minutia of it which makes it kind of hard to adapt because movies are just so different. Um, because of that, I, I sort of have the main events and main plot points sort of stuck in my mind but like again movies are just so different so I'm gonna be basically writing it from scratch I'm just lucky enough to have come away knowing the story so I'm not gonna be like making up the story as I go but a lot of it is gonna have to change so let's get to it we're gonna basically be working through um, we're gonna be working through John Truby's Anatomy of Story um, because it's one of the better books that I've read about uh, screenwriting um, I posted like five books or something that I really liked on my Instagram and, and this is definitely one of them, if not the one. Um, so I'm going to sort of pull up the exercise pages uh, when I get to them, but like the main thing you guys sort of in chapter one is like what kind of story is it and mine's going to be pretty more of like a, a, a spiraling kind of story. Um, it circles inward towards the center, like most... Um, most stories follow a sort of frantic pyramid um, or like a hero's journey type thing, which I mean, this has a hero's journey, but like it, it, it's sort of, it's not going to be like, you know, Frodo gets the ring and goes to the mountain. Like it's not going to be that kind of standard type of thing. Um, it's going to be, you know, two sisters reunite in the house. There's like childhood house. And then, and it's not them like hashing out their life. It's sort of figuring out you know, who they are to each other. Um, of course, with there being like an overarching goal and plot and some sort of nefarious like, backstories and some sort of, uh, I have some twists and stuff that I want to do. Um, so for the premise, we're going to sort of, even though I have the premise, which is, um, you know, two sisters reunite on a stormy night to figure out who they are. Um, but <clears throat> let's, <coughs> sort of go through, like, let me do some examples here. Casablanca, let's see what the truth does. So, let's scoop this in. All the way over, perfect. Um, so, for Casablanca, uh, Truby says, a tough American expatriate uh, rediscovers an old flame only to give her up so that he can fight the Nazis. Great. See, okay, so the reason I picked that example instead of some of the other ones is because Castle Buckham pretty much takes place at Rick's place. Um, the Ginger. Um, so, that sort of rediscovering uh, usually, you know, isn't, isn't like enough for a movie. It obviously, Castle Blank is enough of a movie, but like a lot of modern movies, like they sort of need to achieve a goal. So, for mine, I'm going to try to have that sort of, um, I'm going to try to add that goal. I'm going to add like a clearer objective rather than, because Rick's objective is basically to drink himself to death. Um, but in Crushed, we're going to have two sisters reunite after 10 years. If I knew how to type writing would be easier. 
This is reunite after 10 years to bicker over their inheritance. Um, using everything they've learned in their lives to determine their, to fight for their legitimacy. This is a little long. Um, Truly's managed to make this very succinct. Um, also, they're not sisters; they're half sisters. So that's like the whole thing. Um, two half sisters reunited after ten years. I don't mean after ten years. Not specific to the premise. Bicker isn't really a strong verb, I think, to claim. It has more of a, more size to it. <coughs> to claim their inheritance. Using everything they've learned in their lives to fight for their legitimacy. So, this is two-parter. Um, But it, it still feels like it can be cleaned up. Um, two half sisters reunite to claim their inheritance, uh, using everything they've learned in their lives to fight for their legitimacy. Um, finding that they must find. Uh, okay, so Unite to claim their inheritance. Um, only, let's steal it, only to be forced to fight for their legitimacy. <clears throat> there, okay. So, that's a good start. Great. So, let's go down here and we're going to do the exercise. To work our way through this whole thing. We're gonna get as far as we can into the book. I'll probably do some some actual writing, not just um, not just outlining. I'm gonna try to do like all the outlining that I can, um, which means I'm gonna have to get all the way to plot. Which if you look at the book, I'll pull up a thing. Um, plot work like after plot with this book it's sort of this is where it sort of gets to like opinion stuff like scene construction I sort of agree with in terms of like I don't know the whole book is great actually I mean it's just like you know after you know the whole book you should just believe this is great uh, this is the best book in sort of terms of writing something that you're actually going to have a screenplay at the end of it um but uh, after plot, I can just sort of do, I don't need to do the last three chapters. I can just sort of write the, the screenplay. Um, write down your premise, uh, exercise one. Write down your premise in one sentence, done. Ask yourself if this premise line is the making of a story that could change your life. Okay, so there's other things about this story that I really believe in and really enjoy. Um, which is why I wrote it when I wrote it as a play. But I don't think that being able to prove that something could change your life is kind of asinine. Um, like, if you look at the premise of, like, like, 100 Years of Solitude, if the premise of 100 Years of Solitude is, like, very kind of similar in that it's, like, a family fights for their, like, legitimacy in a world that, like, wants to destroy them. Uh, that's like such a vague premise obviously there's a better way to phrase it but like you can't tell in the premise 
if the movie is gonna be good. Um, cause like some movies have like a solid premise and then the movie's absolutely trash. Um, and then you'll have stuff like, like even this. Tough guy meets girl that he hasn't seen in a while and then doesn't end up with her and then goes and fights zombies. Which he doesn't even do in the movie, he just leaves in the movie. Um, sounds like, you know, is this worth really doing? Um, but you watch it and it's amazing. So I'm fine with that for the premise. Wish list and premise list. Write down your wish list and your premise list. Study them together and identify the core elements of what you care about and enjoy. Um, possibility. Look for what is possible in the premise. Write down options. Okay, so the possibilities. Things you can explore in this. The possibilities. include, you know, uh, I want to sort of explore legitimacy as a theme. Um, I want to sort of talk about, you know, uh, who determines legitimacy, you know, who determines worth um, and value and, you know, a, a lot of these sort of this is sort of like the classic, you know, patriarch dies and everybody fights over the will. Like, this is like, you know, this happens to a lot of affluent families. It happens every single time. Um, unfortunately, you know, the, the twist here is that the father's been dead and now their mother is dead. Well, now uh, one of the sister's mothers <laughs> is dead. Um, so... Now it's like this long awaited fight. Um, so, and then the fact that it's going to be in one location uh, means that <coughs> we're going to have to like really focus on the characters. Um, focusing on the characters. Uh, I think that one of the other things that I really want to do is like focus on memory because this is their childhood home. So let's see how we can include the past visually. Um, because I don't know that we're going to be, we're not going to be like hiring children for this. I mean, we might end up doing that. I don't know. But like, <clears throat> when, they said, when they said I want to be adapted, it's, it's, it's just a play and stuff. Like, in a play, you can have the same actors play themselves as children. Whereas in film, that just kind of looks weird. You can have other actors play children in plays, but, like, it doesn't really, <laughs> doesn't really work in movies. Um, all right. Story challenges and problems. That would be the problem. So... These are all the possibilities of, like, thematic things that we can sort of explore here. Um, when he talks about, like, uh, what's possible within the premise, you know what I mean? He, he uses, like, Michael Crichton as an example. Like, he uses, like, we can create this giant world of, like, Jurassic Park, and, and, and that's all fine. But I, I want to do something a little more self-contained. Um, so that's why my possibilities are thematically based rather than like story world based or franchise based um challenges and problems Ch problems one location we get one location it is a great location we secured an amazing location but we only have one um great house uh also you know we've only got two maybe four actors and we might be able to sneak in this one shot for a second location but I don't even think that's going to happen but I'm just going to because uh, we might see the mother and father maybe do we even see the other mother because they're half sisters other mother um, that's going to be like the main thing it's like really hard to write a movie in one location because just the amount 
of shots in a movie um, as opposed to a play, which is just a wide shot for an hour and a half. This isn't gonna be an hour and a half, though. This is, we're gonna see how long this is. I think it's probably gonna be like half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, I mean, there's ways to expand it, but we're gonna sort of see how it goes. Um, Uh, come up with the designing principle of your story idea. Remember that this principle describes some deeper process in which the story will play out in a unique way. So the designing principle. This is always something that's really sort of difficult for me because I sort of, in that sort of John Didion kind of way, like as you write it, I feel like the design process, the design principle kind of shows itself but you do need to sort of have an idea. Also, this is something you collaborate with a cinematographer on. But, you know, you can't just outsource everything, so let's see. Um, for the designing principle, I think that it's gonna be that an entire life, you know, it's that, it's that self and Rushi quote. Um, in order to understand one life, you have to dwell in the world. I think that, you know, the reverse of that is also true. Um, that, you know, if the entire world affects one life, one life does have the potential there to affect the entire world in some sort of ripple effect. Like, like the same way a father has the potential to affect a large number of people in his family and from them other people's lives. Um, I think ghosts are very important in this. So that's oh yeah, that's what we were gonna do. I was thinking about that last night. Um, so what we're going to do here is this is sort of going to be a sort of Derridian ghost story. That's going to be the thing. That's what it is. It's a rainy, it, this is told as a ghost story. It's going to be spooky. Parts of it are going to be spooky. It's about trauma. Um, spooky trauma. Um, great. So... That's, that's good though. Um, yeah, parts of it are gonna be scary. Parts of it will hopefully be lighthearted and fun, but like other stuff, it's gonna be a stormy night in that like the creepy mansion, so. Okay. Um, all right, best character. Who's the best character? Uh, I mean, I have my own preferences. But when I did the play, um, different people like different characters more because there's only two of them. Um, so I'm honestly going to say it's both of them. It's honestly a like Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid situation because um, you know some people like Butch, some people like Sundance. You know, obviously Paul Newman is like the goat, but like I, I like Sundance personally because he was like kind of an idiot, but also the best you know best gun handing, best gunslinger in the West. Um, Conflict. What? Uh, who? Why? Who is the hero fighting, and what is he fighting about? So, in this case, actually, you know, the first sister, Paula, is going to be the, the hero. I mean, it's like a dual hero thing. Like, you know, it's sort of a buddy. I don't want to say buddy comedy because it's not funny, but like, uh, um, conflict. The conflict is with each other. So, um, who is my hero fighting? their sister and themselves in a dramatic turn of events um so who are they fighting are their sister what are they fighting about they're fighting about their inheritance but also their place in the, in the family their place of belonging who did their father look for etc sister why what about um Father's love and their place in the family slash world. Their own, they're also justifying their own choices to each other. Scoot down a little so that we can see everything. 
There we go. Um, so next, we're gonna do character change. Okay, this is um, this sort of gets into more than the later chapters, but uh, figure out the character arc for your hero, starting with their basic action A, and then what the they're going. And then going to the opposites of the basic action to determine the character's weakness and the beginning of their change here. So, AW equals C. A. So, action and weakness is change. So, let me do this for both. For Paula. Um, her action and then God's action weakness. So let's plug these in. So for Dawn, I know her weakness is vulnerability. Like so she just cannot. So the opposite of vulnerability is like stoicism and strength and uh, not, there's a strength and vulnerability, but like in sort of like a toxic kind of way, like her action is sort of going to be like insistence, it's going to be a uh, demanding, strong arm kind of uh, stone faced kind of thing. She, her primary action there's a book I have somewhere that's just a list of freaking verbs um but it, it's she she was a boxer in high school um so she I mean fighting it's like literally like aggression like is her whole thing like she's like this the original inspiration for this i'll just say it, as pretentious as it is was i was really inspired by the birth of tragedy and how there's two types of art how uh, there's like the dionysian and the apollonian there's sort of that like super structured like hellenistic style of art and then there's that like jackson pollock kind of chaos and that's sort of what these two people embody so Paula sort of is like a, ah, it's really hard to explain. But like, I know what it is, but I need to be able to verbalize it. Um, and they have similar weaknesses too. So, which is fine because they end up bonding over their weaknesses later. Um, they can actually have the same weakness. But, and they're just both so different, but they are so the same at the end of it. Like that's the whole point. Um, so reason and logic are going to be like her main, she like reasons her way, she argues her way into shit. Um, and so the opposite of that is like impulse and like just chaos. Like she's, I don't know. Let's see. What's the opposite of reason and logic? So, irrational, non-rational, non-thinking, unintelligent, unreasonable, unreasonable, unthinking. And see, that's sort of the problem, is that everybody sort of feels that Dawn's that way. But she's really, she has an emotional intelligence. She's like an impulsive, uh, a, um, like, Impulsive strong arming is gonna have to just be what it is for now. Um, I know what it is, I'll be able to show it in a, a greater explanation later. And I think anybody who's watching this will understand what I mean. Because uh, I, I, I mean, if you if you know the word I'm looking for, feel free to like put it in the comments um, if anybody sees it. Uh, anyway, and then that's gonna lead to this sort of change, and they're gonna have to, 
and they're going to sort of end up having a connection to each other. And so that change is that connection is, you know, not everything makes sense, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, that there's room for everyone is kind of this thing. Like she, if, if, and I mean, honestly, you know, being vulnerable does mean sort of abandoning reason and logic. And, and when you have this fight or flight mentality, like Dawn does as well, uh, you know, vulnerability is an abandoning of that as well. It's sort of this openness that sort of this, uh, if reason and logic are your main action and vulnerability is your weakness, your change is going to be letting things not make sense. You know, forgiveness doesn't make sense because they're ultimately going to, um, forgiveness doesn't make sense, but, and that's sort of the same thing for Dawn, but like, um, forgiveness makes you feel, opens you up. Makes you feel unsafe. But it's worth doing. But it's worth doing. Um, in order to heal. So, now we have uh, the moral choice. Which is going to be a uh, list of moral choice you're here I may have to make near the end of the story. Make sure it's a difficult or plausible choice. So, Here's the thing. Forgiveness is the choice. Like, the trick with this here is in movies, they always choose forgiveness. They always choose forgiveness, um, unless it's like a revenge story. Um, but like, they always choose that, and and in and they're and they're gonna in this they're gonna forgive each other in this. But like in order for that to actually work, that needs to be really hard to do. Like make sure forgiveness is difficult. Like people always talk about like forgiveness in a way that it, it ultimately they make it sound like something easy to do, but like it, it, people are so divided on this, and myself included, because in order to actually forgive someone, they need to have done something bad to you. So like, sometimes I'll have people in my life or other people's life that'll be like, I forgive you, but all they did was like not show up to brunch or something like that. Or you have people that'll just cut you out of your life for stuff like that. I think that forgiveness is this powerful thing, and it's this dangerous thing um, where you have the opportunity to sort of see someone as they are and then accept them or don't. Uh, and in order to do that, you really gotta like dig into who they are. So like, I, I think that like, they're gonna forgive each other, but they need to have really hurt each other the way like only families like understand that are really hashing it out, understand. Um, and now, we get to the stupid one, which is audience appeal, um, which this is going to be more of the producer's problem. But I think that, like, the designing principle of it being, like, this ghost story with, like, trauma and, like, yeah, I think that there's, there's, you don't see a lot of that, like, um, you, you don't, um, I don't know that it'll appeal to a wider audience, though, because it does kind of have, like, an art filmy kind of thing, having the, the genre of it being, like, a ghost story will help, but, like, that movie's also, I'm sure that movie's been done before to a certain degree, 
Um, you know, women coming together and working together to become legitimate, you know, in the face of, you know, haunting parents. Um, yeah, I think that that's definitely possible. Um, and then he uses Tootsie. So, for, which I, I may show the page on Tootsie, because it's really good. Um, the possibilities here, a, um, intense look at family and money and what and how two perspectives of memory can be so different. Because you'll talk to people who have different backstories that like lived in the same house and their like experiences will have been so completely different that uh, it'll be like, did you guys live in the same family? And it'll be like, no. no. Um, cool. So that's chapter one. So I'm going to cut it there and I'm going to have some coffee and I'm going to come back and then we're going to do chapter two, chapter three, which is the seven key steps of sorority structure, which is probably one of my more favorite chapters because it's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward and it really helps you, uh, figure out what the movie's going to be.